Organization. Bad drivers cause car wrecks. Not paying attention to the road, operating electronic devices, and drinking while driving can lead to serious injuries. If you've been the victim of a bad driver, a trial lawyer may be able to help you recover money to pay your medical bills, reimburse you for lost wages, and compensate you for the pain caused by your injuries. If you, your friends, or family have been injured in a car wreck, contact me, Attorney Dennis Sperling, toll free, 866-529-2444. I'm here to help. I am the blue. I am the blue. I am the blizzard king. Now, what does that actually mean? What that means is I represent that cold shoulder that you're going to begin to feel from black men. And we see you for who you are, black woman. We see you for the hate-filled individuals that you become because of your selfishness and your waywardness and your falling away from morality and what the Most High God wants for you. But let me tell you the difference between you and that white woman. That white woman stood by her man. Through 500 years of blood and guts, she stood by her man. And whether she liked it or not, she was right on board with him dominating this world. The Asian woman has been oppressed. The Asian man has been oppressed by 500 years of, of, of white male domination. So has the Native American and the Indian in India and the African and the Arab man, everybody. It's the white man's time to rule. Everybody gets a chance. Black people had 80,000 years and you sat next to the black man when he ruled. For the past 500 years, the white man is ruling, guess what you do? Instead of being good companions and getting in line and waiting your turn again, you want to crap all over the black man, even the ones that mean you well. So ladies, you're being replaced. And here's the thing, I'm not going to be nice to you about it. See, I'm not like Kevin Samuels. He tried to do right by you. He tried to teach you. But I've realized you're going to hate me anyway. So what I'm going to do is give you a reason to hate me. So when I'm called home to my ancestors, all that you say will be justified. And I'm okay with that. I am the blizzard.
What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome to the broadcast. Everybody hit the number one button if you can hear me. Big shout out to RDD, Simple Shit TV. Who else we got up in here, man? Y'all make sure y'all hit the number one button. Broken Blade, big shout out to all my members, man. Big shout out to everybody who's hanging out here with Uncle D, man. My name is Dennis Sperling. I am the Blizzard King, uh, also known as Uncle D, to the little homies, to the nephews, man. I'm here because I love you. I'm here because I want to share um, with a bit of wisdom that the Most High has given to me to give to you. And I come to you um, because I think there's a need. I think that there is a need for men in general, but black men in specific, who have been successful in life, who have been successful as fathers, to come out and teach masculinity. Anybody can teach you some of these other things, you know, <laughs> you know, but masculinity seems to be something that is a there is a deficit in it in society. And if we had more masculinity and we had more of a better understanding of masculinity, we wouldn't have these problems that we have in, uh, right here in the Western world. But uh, nevertheless, I want to give a big shout out to everybody in the chat room. Let me finish off Michael J, the Watchers, Arrowhead. Who else we got? Antonio Schuler. Y'all make sure y'all hit that ice emoji or the frozen emoji. Shout out to my girl, Joan J, all my other wrench mobs. Uh, sick with it. Yo, thank you so much. Who else we got up in here, baby? We are doing it big. Did I mention Broken Blade? I hope I did. But uh, anyway, before I get started good, I want to, uh, hopefully, if I can, I want to get this get this little, uh, hold, hold on a minute, let me, let me, Uncle D is having some technical difficulties up in here. Hold on a minute. Let me fix this. And I will uh, get this fixed. I got some video footage. Got a lot of video footage. And this is going to be an in-depth conversation. So y'all just understand that we're going to be here for a minute. You're going to learn something. This is going to be a long flight. It's going to take me a minute to land it. But at the end of the day, you'll definitely understand where I'm coming from as far as masculinity. And more importantly, the secrets to how I raise my son. So... Uh, Here's something I want to share with y'all. Let me just get a point of personal privilege, you know, and I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this a couple of times, and this is definitely going to offend a lot of you guys. Part of being a man is being able to have your own sons, your fertility, your ability. To, and I know this is going to bother some guys because some of y'all can't have children, but the reason it bothers you is because you know innately that having children, especially having sons and raising those sons, is innately connect, con connected to your masculinity. Now, I'm not, I'm not knocking brothers, man. I understand people have uh, health issues, things happen. I get it. I understand. But if you can have children, especially if you can have sons, you need to do that because it enhances your masculinity. It's like going from being a great college player to an NFL Hall of Famer. When you, when you have sons and you raise them to be strong men. Now, again, I'm going to take a point of personal privilege and I want to share with you guys uh, uh, an event. And it, it has a lot to do with what we're talking about tonight. You guys have met my two sons. You, you know the Crimson Cure, talkative little fella. I don't know where he gets that from. Uh, very intelligent. And you also know my other son. Some of you all, like, he doesn't talk a lot. Well, the thing about it is he doesn't need to talk a lot. You know, and the reason he doesn't need to talk a lot because he's a champion. Now, I want to share this video with you guys. It's about six minutes long. Uh, this is the final round at the grappling games. My son did an event the week or uh, well, the month before at, at the uh, at the uh, Toyota, not the Toyota Center, at the um, at the arena down here where not it, it, it's not the Toyota Center. It's a uh, Oh my God. They used to call it Reliant Stadium. Now they, I think now it's called a Reliant Are uh, Arena, a huge um, event. And uh, he didn't do as well as he planned to do. And so I said, well, son, that's all right. You took that L, but we're going to get back up out here. So instead of letting him fight the teenagers again, I said, let's just go ahead and put you in with the grown men, period. So the guy you see standing in front of you is a, 
apparently 21, 22 year old Brazilian Jiu Jitsu practitioner. He has a higher belt than my son. He's older than my son. It's, that's right, it's NRG. That's right, NRG Stadium. Somebody said the video is blurred. The video's not playing yet. The video's not playing yet. <laughs> so if it's blurred already, y'all gonna have a hard time. But um, in the videos, uh, it, I want you just to share, I'm gonna share it with you. I'm gonna turn the sound down. Because we don't need the sound. So this is my boy. And I hope it's playing right now. Very clearly. It's the final round of championship round. No, my boy, uh, you know, I've had him six years martial arts, jujitsu, uh, included Muay Thai, boxing. They, 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 they're going through their basic sword techniques. It's their, um, Hold on, hold on, Lord Jesus. Uh, and I know, is it studying, guys? Let me, let me see. Hold on, hold on. Yeah, this is a trip. Okay, so they end. Let me know if you can see. It. They end up on the ground. My son is trying to get control. Let me, yeah, this ain't, it might not work the way I want it to work, fellas. But the bottom line is, towards the end of the match, my son was down five to zero, okay? And, you know, we had 30 seconds left. And so, um, I hope you're not casting while using Wi-Fi. Somebody says, I hope I'm not. I hope I'm not casting while using Wi-Fi either, baby. Hold on a minute. Let me see what I can do. I'm going to try to pull it back up real quick because I want y'all to see where they are. The point of jujitsu is to either submit your part, submit the other person, or, or, or uh, uh, or oh, that's the to the ground. And, and uh, hold on, hold on. All right, there we go. All right, uh, uh, I ain't trying to go there yet. Hold on a minute. Uh, we've been there before. We did that already. Let's get up out of there and let's get back to this. So let me just do it like this. So at this point in the match, the 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 the, the young man had already taken my son down to the point. Um, let me get it right here. The young man had already scored uh, like five points. You see what I'm saying? And I'm just moving through it. And my, But my boy never quit. Mind you, these matches are like six minutes long. And so what happens is, at this point, my son is still down by five points in this six-minute match. And we got like 30 seconds left. And he's fighting and fighting and fighting. And as you see right here, at this point, it's damn near over. Because the grown man got, you know, he got side control over my son and uh there's not really a whole lot he can do with it but my boy never quit and he's trying he's trying to fight he's getting in the shrimp position he's if you see right there those of you guys who are practitioners he's trying to get the kimura but of course the advanced belt already knows that and so he's reaching for the other side trying to get it there's really not a whole lot he can do we're running out of time we got at this point one minute and 15 seconds left and my son is down by five points. And it's, it, it seems like it's hopeless. I'm going to be honest with you. I was like, well, son, there's another one next week. This is kind of where I was at. Now what you see him doing is reaching for the collar. He's trying to go for a, a, a sweep. That's not available. But lo and behold, he keep, he's, now he's going for the Ezekiel choke. And the, and the young man says, no, that's not. If y'all can hear me, hit the number one button. So at this point, we got... Man, 45 seconds left. Can y'all hear me? Let me know if you can hear me by hitting the number one button. I need to know if you guys can hear me. Hit the number one button if you can hear me. Make sure this is clear. I don't want to be out here wasting my time. <laughs> y'all can't hear nothing I'm saying. Uh, but at this point, he's going for the Ezekiel choke. 
uh, while he has the young, the, the, the 21 year old in full guard. And, uh, but that's not going to work cause he's going to see it coming, but here we are. And I, and we got 30 seconds left. My son is down, by, well, not 30, with 30 seconds left. He's down by 15 points. And I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let this play out. All right. So you can understand what's happening. So the young, man the 21 year old is about to try to pass all right he's gonna posture you see him posturing up he does what a great two point okay okay all right watch this here it goes Here it goes. Here's the sweep. Full mount, four points. And that's how he won. He fought all, all the way to the end. He didn't quit. With <laughs> and, the, and the time is over. It's it. And so, you know, here, here's what I'm saying, fam. Um, it, it was because of that last minute move that he was able to win this thing and actually come out. Somebody said the stream is like, I know, but y'all, but you can check it out on my YouTube page too. But because of that, my son, he was able to win and he came in first place in the grown up division. Um, so I'm real proud of him. You know, I'm real proud of him for that. And the main point of that, and we back, shout out to my boy. So you see, he don't need, he doesn't need to talk that much. He's a, he's a man of action. And we need both. Uh, my whole point is this, um, what I do with my sons is I emph emphasize masculinity, okay? And, um, you know, masculinity is something that has, it's, it's not something you can talk about. It's something, it, it, men are formed, you see? And you can talk about what you're going to do, but you actually got to do it. You actually got to put it, you got to put, you got to put that, put it to use. You got to put your manhood on the line, you got to deal with these challenges. You got to deal with the tests that come along with manhood. And, you know, whether you win or whether you fail, you keep pushing. You understand what I'm saying? And so why do I do this? Why, do, why is this important? Well, here's the thing. We live in a society where uh, masculinity, for the most part, is shunned. What do I mean by that? Well, I mean that, you know, if you if you start talking about traditional masculinity, masculinity, people will tell you that you have somehow uh, turned into a uh, some sort of um, sexist. You've turned into some sort of uh, anti woman woman hater. OK, but here's the thing. This is what's necessary to counteract that queen mother goddess simp chip programming. See, in an event like that, I reward my sons for those manly deeds. You guys have seen the video footage. They lift weights. They fight in tournaments, whether it's jujitsu or Muay Thai, whatever. I might reward them with a steak dinner, okay? And uh, I teach my sons that they should, or I train them to seek the respect of other men as opposed to the attention and validation of women. See, respect and validation from their peers is a sign that they're moving up in the world. Okay. All right. This is a this is this is this is how you build future strong men, what I'm doing. What do they what do they tell you? It's better to be a warrior in the garden than a gardener in a war, right? See, because strong men can learn to temper their strength and tone it down. A weak man can only be weak and nobody follows a weak man, especially a cowardly weak man. As a father, I make my sons work hard. I make them play hard and I reward, I reward them for their manly deeds, not just their accomplishments, but also their manly deeds. No different than how I reward myself for my manly deeds. And I also teach them to solve problems, um, solving problems and figuring out things on, the, on different situations without quitting. And I do this because I want to raise respectable men who are respected by other men. And if they're not respected, then fear, fear is sufficient. Are y'all with me? Hit the number one button, man. I want to make sure you guys are with me, okay? 
Uh, this is not going to be an exciting program. This is going to be one of those programs where we talk about building you guys up to be the best men you can be. Because I know we could go talk about the, the, we can go talk about what's going on in in these YouTube streets. But I'm sure you can get that somewhere else. You come over here to get your bracks, get your get your bats and your uh, your bricks for manhood okay, to help you guys become better men. I don't want to. I'm not going to sit up here and waste my time talking about uh, what you, your, your latest white girl fantasy has done. Praise God. <laughs> Praise <laughs> Moses. <laughs> I think there are plenty of other YouTubers that are fixated on that issue. Uh, they fixated on race and, you know, female parts. Right here we're talking about developing men. And I hope you guys forgive me for that, but I'm here to talk to black men about being the best men they can be. I'm here to talk to men in general about being the best men they can be. Uh, and so in doing so, there's no better example than me pointing out what I do with my sons. You see myself, but the, but the demonstration of a good leader is to be able to recreate himself. And if he can't do it with his own sons, then, you know, you, you got to look at that dude's side eye. You understand? So, uh, you know, I'm just saying, you know, he ain't, you know, you got to, you I mean, it's a lot of people. And let me say this, man. It's a lot of great talkers out there. It's a lot of dudes that talk a lot about manhood. But, you know, they they can't show and prove what they've done. You see what I mean? They can't show and prove what, what they've done with themselves. I want to know what you did. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Not what you told somebody else to do. What did you do? And then after you proved to me what you did, show me what you did to your own sons. Because it's easy to take another man who needs a few points who's already been raised up and might need to be just that's read need to be pointed in the right direction. It's another thing to take a boy from scratch and fashion and mold him into manhood that shows an an in-depth knowledge of masculinity. But nevertheless, as I said, um, you know, I, 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 I'm a father and I make my sons work hard and I, and I reward them for working hard. I reward them for their manly deeds. I reward them for their accomplishments. I reward them for solving problems and um, figuring out things without me. And and, and the other thing is, uh, as I said, I want them to be respected amongst men. I don't care how many women they have. I want men to respect my sons. You see, I want them to be able to sit at the table of manhood and, and other men and say, those are some hell of a men right there. You see? And so in doing so, what do I do? I pay them for their athletic achievements. I pay them for their scholastic achievements. I reward them with praise for stepping up and meeting different challenges. More importantly, I invest in my sons. That is my greatest objective as the father. I invest in them because I know eventually that's the main thing that's going to pay off. Jackie Onassis. Formerly Jackie Kennedy said, if you don't, if you don't raise your kids right, nothing else really matters. You see? Nothing else really matters. If you don't do right by your kids, if you don't do a good job with your kids, nothing else really matters, fellas. Now let me give you a few pointers. And I want you to hear me. Some of y'all like, damn, you got your sons out there fighting grown ass men. Some of you ladies out there are like, oh my God, I would never. I know, I know you would never. And that's why women aren't equipped equipped to raise children. And some of you men, you don't know how to treat your boys. I learned a long time ago, you got to treat boys. If you treat boys like they're children, they'll act like babies. But if you treat boys like men, they'll act like men. See, either you elevate or you fall. And it depends on the environment that you exist in. If you place your sons in an environment, whether real or artificial, where they have to or they're expected to elevate, then they will or they will fail trying. And even if they fail, they'll learn from their mistakes and they'll continue trying until they elevate or they'll quit. But of course, the incentive not to quit is what? Your praise, your accolades the feeling of winning. See, because quitting is not an option to someone who has a winning mentality, and that comes from the confidence 
of having built your successes up, especially if you got a father in your corner saying, hey, son, push it. You heard me. You guys may not have heard because I had the volume down, but in the background, I was screaming, come on, son, you got it. I'm right here. So he hears his father's voice. Do y'all hear me? And this is something that's been going on for years. My home is regimented and structured. Most modern men couldn't live here. Because <laughs> we'd be doing manly things around here on a regular basis. These are ordinary days. And my sons know that I'm doing these things this way because I love them. And I want them to be strong and I want them to be respected by other men. Their validation is going to come from who? Other men. They're not going to seek validation from women. And remember, the strongest iron is shaped in the hottest fire. So when you think I'm going too hard on my boys, fine. You raise your children how you choose to. I probe masculinity around here. I promote that. I promote it heavy in my everyday life. And I'm doing so to fight the feminization of black boys and the, and the rainbow agenda that's been set upon the black community that has ruined the black community and is spreading throughout the Western world. Tell me I'm lying. I'm also preparing my young black boys for the world that I know won't cater to them. And in many regards, doesn't like them. And will try to use everything against them. And so they must be well prepared. What I do to myself and my sons is we recreate manly tests that men will have to endure. And I prepare my sons to be leaders of men and future generations. Men, and I want to, and I want you ladies, I know I got a few ladies around here. I know a few ladies in there. I want you to hear me. I want you to understand a little bit about masculinity. I want you to hear this. Men have the capacity to be great. But great is not always a good thing. They have, a, they have the a, a capacity to be both great builders and maintainers. They have the, a great capacity, capacity to bring order. They have a great uh, 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 capacity to protect societies. But manhood and men also have a great capacity to destroy and terrorize and bring chaos to society. It's the yin and the yang. It's both sides. And what I'm doing here is I'm building future builders and protectors and maintainers and order bringers of tomorrow. And we don't have many of those these days. The world these days are building more young boys who are filled with chaos in their minds and their hearts, and they're going to cause chaos. They're going to destroy. That's what they're triggered. That's what they're setting themselves up to do. That's what this society is setting themselves, setting these boys up to, to, up to do. Again, I'm going to tell you again, I don't prepare my boys to try to seek approval from women. I prepare them to seek respect from other men. Okay? And I want you guys to understand that because this is important. And this is just a warm-up. We ain't got there yet. Shout out to everybody who's still with me. I know y'all bored. Y'all ain't got the likes up. I know this is a boring-ass conversation, but that's all right. <clears throat> At least you're learning something. And we're going to get into the history of it, too. I'm a, I like making history and the holy word come alive to you. And I want to talk to my brothers for a minute. Y'all let me know if you can hear me. Where the brothers at? Where my brothers at? Where all the black men at? Can you hear me? But let's run a quick commercial. I'll be right back. I don't believe in forgiveness. 
No, no, I, no, no. I think it's all right to have a hateful, unforgiving heart. I think that's how you live longer, hating a motherfucker. I think having a forgiving heart causes you to go to the grave early, holding that shit in when you really ain't forgave a motherfucker. Uh, I'm the kind of motherfucker if you do something to me. I got to get my lick back. I want to do something back to you. If you said something about me, I want to say something about you. Shout out to Charleston White. Fair use, fair use. Y'all still with me? Hit the number one button if you can, can hear me. Make sure y'all type Charleston White in the chat room. I love that young brother. I love what he's talking about. But uh, anyway, let's get back to the brothers. Where my brothers at? Where all the black men at? All the brothers, man. Where y'all at? If you if you're a black man in the chat room, write black attack. That's what we're gonna do. It black attack. That's gonna be our word. Black attack. <laughs> Come on, black attack. Where the, where's the where's the brothers at, man? Type black attack in the chat room. All the brothers, right? Because we're attacking all our adversaries, those we can see and those we can't see. Mostly, we're attacking this mindset. Black attack. Let's get it in. All right. I know my brothers are here. Black men and boys, l let me tell you, I, I want y'all to hear me, man. We need to be reprogrammed to seek the respect from other men as opposed to the validation and approval of what? These hoes. Bam. Okay? I know. And of course, when I say these hoes, I'm referring to the Basque language. Okay? Because there's a language uh, of the Basque people and this 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 location is between France and uh, and the Iber Peninsula, and they speak a language that is separate from both. But when I say these hoes, I'm referring to, uh, and it's spelled D E A Z H O A Z, and it's the Basque language. When I'm actually going to actually going to speak about a little history from the Basque language, as you know, that's my hobby, studying the Basque language. Okay, and so. Henceforth, and you know, therefore moving on, uh, we're gonna talk about it. But let me see some. Let me just check some real quick. I want to make sure this this thing is uh, y'all can hear me clearly. I don't know, man. I don't. Check I don't know. Yeah, I want to make sure. Clearly. I don't know what's this, going this, on. double checking. But anyway, so here's what you know. We need to be reprogrammed to seek respect from men as opposed to the validation from women. Okay, women aren't the measure of men. Okay. And I don't take men seriously who seek validation from women, who seek knowledge on how to be a man from a woman. Those pro-black simps and blackity blacks, they're the ones looking for validations from the queens, and they wonder why they're still stuck and they're not making any progress. Because men don't respect them and women don't respect them. The overwhelming majority of black men exalt these lovely ladies, these queens, due to being raised by single mothers in a matriarchal sewer, okay? Which has become the black community. That's our main problem. Let me, let me, let me give you guys something. I want you to understand something. Men measure other men. Men determine the status a man has and how much respect or fear uh, a man can garner from other men or really is fear of their retribution. That's how men determine who they respect. You guys don't believe me? Women like, what? What do you mean? Okay, so, so I want you to understand this. A poor man who can whoop your ass has a higher status than a rich man who we determine as a sniveling, whiny bitch. Don't you? You understand what I'm saying? A poor man, a man of meager means, who can kill your ass, who can beat your ass, put hands on you, lay you out, carries more status amongst men than a rich man who we deem to be a sniveling, whiny bitch. He might have more money, but he's not really respected amongst men. He might have a title of king, bishop, uh, billionaire, but if we see him as a sniveling bitch, a weak man, a weak-minded man, we don't respect him, do we, men? You don't respect men just because they're rich. No, you don't. You know that. You like the idea of having money, but you don't respect them. 
a man who has meager means, who can handle himself, who's respected by other men, who can whoop your ass, put hands on you, say what he mean, mean what he say, you respect that guy. Rich or poor, you like that guy. You want that guy next to you in a war. You want that guy next to you in a fist fight. And I'm going to explain that a little later on in detail. And see, women never seem to understand the importance of being respected by other men. And in actuality, that's what is attractive to women. Women look at the guy that the other men respect and say, damn, I like that guy. That, that's the guy I respect right there. That's the top dog. That's the, that's the lion that, that the other lions fear. Unfortunately, in the black community, we got a shortage of that. Yes, we do. And for you guys, men, women, whoever, you have daughters and granddaughters, I'm going to tell you, it's going to be very difficult to find good, responsible, masculine, traditional-minded men. And it's hard to find it now, and it's going to be worse later on. Now, I'm going to talk about YouTube for a minute. Now, I know there's been a lot going on in YouTube, but I've been warming up. Y'all with me? Y'all ready for this? One of the issues that I have, fellas, and I'm not naming names. Shout out to my man, RDD. Thank you for that 20 bucks. I appreciate you, bro. Thank you. The first contribution of the night. Thank you so much. I didn't know it was working. I thought y'all was just, y'all ain't got y'all checks yet. It's all good, baby. I do this no matter what, baby. I'm here for you. Thank you so much, though. I appreciate that, RD. Thank you so much for the super chat. But um, back to this YouTube situation, man. And it's really shown its complete whole and entire ass, man. The whole black YouTube section has been exposed. Fellas, and it's embarrassing. That's why I refuse to participate in the ass kissing that's going on right now. Every time you mention that person's name, more people run over there to that person's channel. You understand me? And her people already got money. You understand? So I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to participate in that. You understand what I'm saying? But the problem is we have allowed women into these conversations to voice their opinions about men, specifically black men. It's like black men will do anything for a woman's validation. And that's not cool, fellas. But I understand why. I know why. And you know why. Because we've talked about it. We don't need women to tell us that. Most of the advice women tell you is going to make benefit them. Shout out to my man, Mr. 43TX. All right, separate, separate super chat. Thank you so much. I wish we could get these likes up. My man, Kevin3905. We paid on Fridays, but I found this in the cow. <laughs> oh, man, my boy, uh, Dimitri, thank you so much for the cash app. <laughs> he found that in the cow, Claire. Good looking out, baby. I appreciate it. <laughs> Y'all funny as hell. There's some dudes on here that's so funny, man. Where my deacon at? Where my deacon, Dusty Nuts at? He got all the jokes. Some let me just take another point of personal privilege. Some of you brothers are so talented. You are so humorous. I wish you guys had broadcasts. I wish you had like books you could write. I, you know, use this YouTube opportunity, man, to voice your talent. Some of you dudes are hilarious, man. I have met some of the most entertaining black men. Oh, just funny for no reason at all. This is this is the talent that we talk about in the black community, and unfortunately. Yeah, shout out to Deacon Dusty Nuts, man. Unfortunately, you know, some of y'all are busy with life and you don't have an opportunity to uh, really showcase your, your humor. But I'm glad we have this page where you all can do that. But um, let's get back to the point, man. You brothers looking for validation, man. And, uh, you know, you, you're showing your ass. You're showing your weakness. We we could talk about these lovely ladies. How much My man, Wrench Turner, said they're only around to learn how better to finesse. Ah, uh, ain't that the truth? But let me let me start off with this, fellas. Self-respect, right? And, and, and choosing your heroes, 
and, and learning to, to emulate those heroes, right? And kicking the obsession that you have over women. That should be your first move moving forward because we got a sickness amongst us. And it showed itself over the past couple of weeks with this fixation over this individual. We'll call this individual XX chromosome individual, right? Well, we, it's a fixation, man. I can't do it. I'm just, I can't do it, man. Zarius Brown said, much respect. Um, thank you so much. Uh, Laverne Gibbs said, "Is iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. I know. But, brother, it's like we got to start over at, at the beginning. I need you, brothers, to have more self-respect. Some of y'all read my community post where I talked to the good brother Obsidian. I love that man. I appreciate what he's done. I may disagree with, with his, his the way in which he dealt with the recent situation with the unnamed person the XX chromosome person, but I still love my brother and I'm never going to disrespect my brother. I disagree with him. We have a different way of seeing things. I personally know that this works for me and is I'm not going to ever put a woman's and, and I know he didn't mean it like that. Okay. And I know a lot of brothers meant well, but I know how it looks to the world. It looks like all of us here in this space, all these black men have this fixation with this white woman, and I hate to say it. And it looks bad as a black man looking at other black men, who, who, whether you like the person or not, it looks bad that we focus in all this attention on this woman. And it looks bad in front of our own black women. Why y'all paying so much goddamn attention to that white girl? We got our own issues, and, and all she got, it's like the Black Panther Party. All they got to do is send a couple of white girls in there, and destroy the whole shit. And I thought we had something going. And it's the leaders. It's the people who've been here for a while. Who gives this shit? You see? Again, when you saw my broadcast, what did I say? I said, I'm disappointed at you. I don't give a damn what she did. She shouldn't have been allowed in in the first place. I already knew who she was. You, you know, you don't, look, man. I don't have to hear people verbalize what I always already know they think, you know, to know who they are. You understand me? Like you ain't got to show me video footage for me to already treat you like I know you are. My oh, man, the Will Camp said Trevor Lawrence, aka just pasty things. <laughs> boy, y'all are y'all boy, y'all are got jokes. All oh, y'all, the, the internet is undefeated. But 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 listen to me now, brothers. Listen to me, man. Self-respect would have made you prevent you from even doing that. Of course, there are people out there trying to get likes and they trying to get their viewership up and they want to go back and forth with other popular YouTubers and what they want to do that because it's just a money thing. But I'm talking about you brothers. If you spend all day and all day yesterday looking at video footage and, sh and, and, and conversations related to that person and you wasted your days, I was at jujitsu. I was at Kaju Kimbo Karate. I was lifting weights. Hell, I went down and had me a good meal and, and, and stuff like working on my masculinity. Time is short in this life. I ain't got time to focus on no white woman or no woman for that matter, unless she's my daughter and I ain't got no daughters. Samson Keller said, all hell of Blizzard King recognition for returning to love. Thank you so much, brother. But what I'm saying is self-respect would have prevented you from doing that. Right? You got to kick this obsession over women, black women, all women. You, you got to kick it. You got to get it out your system. What do I tell y'all to my passport bros? Great. Go over there, get all that out your system, but recognize it's just a phase. You're going to sowing your wild oats and you coming back. My man, salty balls. The salty balls. Uh, <laughs> guest minister salty balls said, Ye shall calleth upon the name of the treasure, and the riches shall rain down from the ethos. <laughs> Much business and folly has consumed me. Thus wisdom will be gained from the ears that I have lended in from the shadows. Amen. Praise God. Salty, guest pastor Salty Balls has come through. Thank you, guest pastor Salty Balls. We appreciate that. We're still looking for Deacon Dusty Nuts. He is uh, apparently outside uh, working with the valet to make sure all the all the parishioners' cars are properly parked. But he'll be in in he'll be in 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 the pastoral uh, uh, section soon. But uh, anyway, um, 
again, fellas, you should not seek, you should not seek uh, the respect and validation of women. Okay. More importantly, let me let me say this. Shout out to Marcus Robbie. He said, this is just a battle, but we must prepare to fight and win the war. But the war is going to be fought up here, fellas. The war is fought here and here. Self-respect wouldn't allow us to dwell on that. Okay? And let me tell you something else, family. You shouldn't seek respect from all men. Damn. Yeah. There are still plenty of men that will lead Men, uh, men and young guys and young boys are straight. Let me tell you something. See, we've been seeking the respect of men in the black community for the past 60 years. Normally, these are the flashy guys, the guys with money, the guys that the women like, the guys with swag. Hell, we done got to the point of, dude, all he got to do is have a little swag. The irony is, in the community, the same women that these black American women complain about are the men that they give the most respect to. And who are these guys? They, they're the guys that have all the hoes, right? And it's typically, at least early on, it's the Pookie and Ray Rays. It's the irresponsible dudes. And, and so what does that mean? That means you got a lot of young men seeking these guys for respect. They're looking to them to teach them. They're looking, looking to these men to teach them how to be men because up the epitome of manhood in the black community right now is getting at these hoes. How many of them you can bag? But that's not manhood. And I started off by telling you, yeah, the ability to reproduce does play a part. Your fertility does play a part in your manhood and how you're perceived by other men. A man that has five sons is looked at much differently than the man that has five daughters. I'm just telling you, that's the reality. You ain't got to like it. I know it's, it's a tough world. Okay. But what we've been looking at is men who can lay with women, not women, men who can have women, take care of these women, raise children with these women and take care of those children and make them out to be great men when they grow older. We've been looking up to the Pookies and the Ray Rays. That's who the young men in the black community have been looking up to. And that's why we got a bunch of Pookie Ray Rays. We got men who should rightfully be upstanding, dignified, hardworking men. They got Pookie and Ray Ray qualities. Now, don't get me wrong. Pookie and Ray Ray do have some redeeming qualities. They're not all bad. Like Pablo Escobar. He was a great family man, right? But the bottom line is he's still a Pookie and Ray Ray. He's a destroyer. He's a person who brings chaos to the community. These cal Overall, these caliber of men have been poor role models for black boys to follow. Shout out to my man G Money. He said the entire fiasco was the tribe and true banana in the tailpipe trick. Divide, conquer, and get paid while doing Hell yeah. Look at the havoc this has caused one day. People will learn to stop taking shirts from shirtless people in a snowstorm. Yeah, man. All y'all did was make that white girl more popular amongst white men who have divergent racial views. All y'all did was make her famous. She's got a stamp of approval from, the, from, from her people. She got popular on your ass just like Fox News did, and she did the switch and got y'all over here fighting. We made, I, I, you know what, I, I can't, I'm not dealing with that shit no more. Let's get back to it. Y'all hit the number one button, man. Let, matter of fact, let me take a motherfucking break so I can recalibrate. 63% of youth suicides are from single mother homes. 90% of homelessness and runaway children are from single mother homes. You can't homes. put that on the mother. 85% of no. children who show behavioral disorders are from single mother homes. 80% of rapists with anger problems are from single mother homes. 71% of high, high school dropouts are from single mother homes. 70% of youths in operated institutions are from single mother homes. 80% of all the youths that are in prison are from single mother homes. This shows that boys and girls need both their mother and their father. And I, I will tell you as a father, I know from raising my son that he needs both me and his mother. 
All right. Shout out to that brother with these stats, man. But let, let's let's get back to it, man. So we're talking about masculinity. We we're we're talking about uh you know maintaining your manhood in a woman raised society. And we it's gonna be, look. I'm just warming up. I know it's a long ass warm up, but it's gonna be some other stuff in here. I'm just talking to you about a philosophy, right? I just want to get y'all right. Now here's the thing: you gotta understand. Far too many black men have been raised to despise black men whether we know it or not, those conversations you overheard, whether directly from your mother or through television and these sort of things, all those conversations, they, they mess with your psyche. Okay. Whether you know it or not. All right. And here, let me tell you something else. You've been praised. You've been raised to praise women. You've been raised to see them as the person you seek validation from. So guess what happens when you get older and these lovely ladies reject you? You can't take that rejection that you receive from these black women. And you haven't been raised to respect your father so you don't seek validation or respect from men. You've been trained to seek validation and respect from women. And when they respect, when they disrespect you or don't validate you, guess what? You just round here mad, having low self-esteem. You see where you, a lot of you are right now. These black women you have been uh, 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 raised and taught to believe are the prize don't accept you and you can't handle it. And that's the problem with seeking validation from women. That's not what you're supposed to do, fellas. And I want you to hear me on this. Black men need to understand that we don't have any friends in this world. All the brothers is listening. Hit black attack. Type black attack in the chat room. If you heard that, we don't have friends in this world. Your own mama will trade you in for the butter for a butter biscuit. And your elders will look the other way when bad things will happen to you. You don't believe me? Look at the 99, 95 crime bill. When the elders and the community members came out and said what? We need to get these young people under control. These are the same people y'all raised. You can't control your own kids? Okay, we're going to put them in jail. Guess what they did? They looked the other way. That's what we're dealing with. That's what you're dealing with, brothers. And it's jacked up. It's a jacked up situation. Now, again, brothers, your, 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 in your life, you're going to have to deal with women. And the minute you start dealing with women in a sexual way, hell is going to come right behind it. <laughs> hell is coming behind. <laughs> right? And, and even my sons, you can't spare them from that. They just gonna have to learn and they're gonna have to grow from it. But the main thing you do is you teach them how to control their emotions. That comes from the things that we're dealing with. They not, you teach them how to control their emotions and they'll know when others are trying to control them through their emotions. They'll know when women are trying to manipulate them. More importantly, you teach them to seek what? Validation from men and approval from men that they respect, respectable men, as opposed to who? These hoes. Y'all type these hoes in the chat room. It's a Basque word. Y'all been, we speaking languages over here. All right? Evolution has already established what a man is and what his duties are in a relationship with a woman. So in order to become a better man, you need to seek advice from successful men, not women, and not the type of men that will lead you astray. A successful man will teach you how to become successful. A te- a teach you how to properly take care of yourself, how to properly take care of your responsibilities, which should include that woman that you get, your future wife, your family, and your other responsibilities as a man. A man doesn't seek validation from a woman. How many times do I have to say that? 
And if you guys knew this, this whole fiasco that happened over the past couple of weeks wouldn't happen. Y'all was running over there to, to that. I was running like flies to shit. <laughs> oh, man. Again, whether he learns, whether he fails or succeeds, he needs to also understand that nobody's at to help him. Why do you even have to hear what women say anyway? Haven't we been hearing them for the past 60 years, family? Huh? Do you men really think women are going to change? Do y'all really think these women are going to change? Are you talking to them and letting them voice their opinions about how they feel about how men should operate? Do y'all really think so? I don't think so. And I think history bears that out. As men, we lead women. And either they follow or they're abandoned. But let me tell you what the problem is when you allow women to lead men. The message becomes disingenuous when women regurgitate men's talking points. And what that does is it causes for men to abandon not only the messenger, but the message, no matter how valid it is. Look what happened when y'all let all these lovely ladies into these red pill spaces. You Negroes don't even want to hear what red pill is no more. Red pill has become dirty words. But it was a good message, being aware. But now that you've allowed all these women to give you advice on masculinity and how it should be applied, you don't even want to hear it no more, do you? Tell the truth. I saw it coming. That's why I say I'm cool on this. Even though I was drafted into this so-called manosphere and this black manosphere, even though I, I didn't ask to be, I made sure I separated myself, especially since they said they didn't want me in it no more. Because they could tell I wasn't spitting that in the first place. I want you to be well-rounded men. I want you to be whole men. I want you to be traditional men. That's what I want for you. I want you to be happy men. And I don't want you to follow me. I want you to follow your own leads. Follow the most high. My man G Money said by the time they change, they'll be too old to do anything about it. Right. You're not a leading man or an alpha man or a high-value man if you follow the lead of a woman as related to masculine issues. That, that just goes against the nature of, 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 of what a man should be. That's just not happen. It's not going to happen. Why? Number one, women are easily influenced. They're chameleons. For the most part, they'll say what needs to be said. Men, on it just so they can survive, they're survivors. Men are shaped by hard times. Men are shaped by stress, chipping away at that granite rock. That's what builds a man. A woman will fall into any shape. Whatever vessel is holding her, she'll fall into that shape. Now, let's get to the nitty-gritty. Y'all with me? Because we're about to talk, but we're about to have some history lessons here. So don't run off yet. All right? The sign of a weak society that's ripe for the taking. How do you know? What's one of the signs? When you start seeing so many men needing the validation from women. Throughout history, when a nation or society, shout out to my man, Ren Sharn, he says, sounds good to their ears, but it actually uh, live, live the same talking points goes after, goes against their westernized program. But yeah, they can't do it. They just talking. These women are just talking. And he said, I'm listening to you, Unc. I hope you are. These women are just all these red pill broadcast. That don't mean that shit. They, they, they don't want life to get that. They don't mean that. They just talking to you. The women that are talking to women, that's different. I'm talking about the women who are talking to men. They, they don't mean that shit. That goes against human nature for them to seek discomfort associated with actually having to do something and fulfill the traditional role that women feel. That would mean they'd actually have to do something. They don't want that. They lying to you. And y'all believed them. That white girl lied to y'all. Y'all thought she was a cool white girl. And then you got your feelings hurt. 
Poe y'all. Not me. Not Uncle D. Oh no. I seen that coming. But it's a sign of a weak society when you seek invalidation from women, whether they white or black. See, throughout history, when a nation or society becomes matriarchal and the women have been given the right to rule, listen, political control, the right to rule, the right to pull the levers of society in, 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 the, uh, in, in the country or the nation or the tribe, men become weak. That's just what happens because they become no longer responsible for the decision-making and therefore no longer responsible for the consequences. So whatever happens, happens. And guess what happens after that? They are soon overrun by patriarchal societies where men have control. And I'm not talking about your woman determining whether or not you're going to have fish or chicken for the night or what color bed sheets you have or what kind of goddamn drapes you got on or the paint on the wall in the house. I'm talking about society. When women begin to pull the levers of society and men step back, they become weak. That's what's happened to Western countries. Let me tell you something else, and this is going to be personal. To my ancestors, to my black ancestors, our African ancestors, they operated in this space. Life got too good. They started allowing women to rule and participate and have a say-so. And guess what happened? They were enslaved. Because the women who rule, in part, did not understand the savagery of men. What did I just say earlier? What do men have the capability of doing? They have the capability of being uh, uh, builders. They can bring order. They can, bring, uh, they can build a society. They can protect a society. They can maintain a society. But what else do we know about men? They also have the power to bring or the capacity to bring destruction and chaos and tyranny. That's the savagery of men. Great destruction is also possible in the same man. That is the dual, the dual uh, uh, capacity of manhood. That is the dual mindset of manhood. The Native American said every man has two wolves in him. Wolves like, oh, two wolves in him. And you fight, the, uh, you fight one or the other just to maintain. It's the one you feed the most that become the strongest. I tried to feel, feed the builder, the one who brings order, the protector, the provider. That's what I try to do. But again, when men become lazy because they allow the women to rule and they're not suffering the consequences because life is easy, life is easy, so they let the women rule. And then when life becomes hard, because some other group of men comes in and invade it, it goes bad. They didn't prepare for war. That's what happened to our people. While the rest of societies were building themselves up and traveling around the world, we lost what we had. We had no competition. We didn't get gunpowder. We didn't get cannons. We didn't use our gold and whatnot to trade. We didn't form our armies. And we got overrun by Arab societies and thereafter European societies. If you don't know what I'm talking about, Look up the Arab slave trade. Look it up. It predated the Atlantic slave trade, which was governed by Europeans, by about 1,600 years. And that's what happened to us in a nutshell. And I don't want it to happen again. So what do we do on this page? First of all, we emphasize masculinity. Understand this also. Men built all the relevant civilizations on planet that are still in existence. All the wonderful things we see and experience, men built that. So why then logically should we give women the right to govern more so, especially, because that's what they're going for now, dominate. Why should we give them the right to dominate us? Why should we do that? Some of you might say, oh, that's toxic masculinity. But tell me why we should do that when we don't have to. We did it. We made it happen. And we're allowing the women to take it from us. Why? And dominate us. Let's be honest. 
Women want things given to them. Oh, sexism. You don't believe me? Go to the family court. Look at all these women making up these false DV charges, trying to get these uh, rich athletes and actors in trouble so they can hit them with a lawsuit. They really truly feel like they're entitled to what men have built and earned. Solely because they're women. And if you give them the opportunity or if the law sets it up so that they could take these things from you legally, they will. That's why the divorce rate is up. Why should we give them that? I want you all to come with me for a minute on the journey. All right, y'all still with me? Hit the number one button. We, now we're about to dig into the meat of it. This is some graduate level stuff. I want you to roll with me now. Y'all still with me? Hit the number one with me, baby. Hit the number one button. Matter of fact, we'll take a quick break. book right about back. getting even, the importance of getting even. Is, is revenge sweet? I believe strongly in getting even. If somebody has hurt you, if somebody's gone out of their way to hurt you, I think that if you have the opportunity, you should certainly go out of your way to do a number of them. And I've had more criticism about that one statement in my book than any other statement. The clergy is called, the ministers, the priests, the rabbis, they've all said, what a terrible thing to say. That's against our teachings. I just believe it. I believe in an eye for an eye. If you did turn the other cheek, as the clergy are presumably suggesting to you, what would that do to your reputation in business circles here in New York? Do well, I don't know what it would do to my reputation. I just don't believe instinctively in turning the other cheek. If somebody was out to hurt you, if somebody was out to do a number on you, I really believe that you should just do a number on them if you get the chance. All right, welcome back to the, the uh, broadcast. Shout out to <laughs> our former president. You might not like him, but uh, one thing we couldn't say is that the, 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 he was definitely a man, you know, he was definitely a, a patriarch of his family. I, I, I've yet to hear anybody in his immediate family getting out of pocket with him. But uh, let's do this. I want to uh, put this link in the chat room. Simple, easy to find. Uh, it's a Wikipedia site. And I like Wikipedia because it's easy for people to understand and they have references at the bottom. Okay. References, even when I was working on my PhDs over at Texas Southern, Wikipedia is where we started, okay? So uh, let me show you guys something, okay? Under the section marked matriarchy, this is matriarchy. It just says matriarchy. What is matriarchy? You talk about it all the time on these internet streets, don't y'all? Y'all talk about it all the time. Matriarch, but, but some of y'all don't even know what it is. Y'all with me? Y'all go? Y'all ready for this boring-ass lecture? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> About to take you back to uh, history camp, like when you had to take history again, again in the eighth grade for summer school. About to, that's what we about to do to y'all asses, all right? So I want you to roll with me, okay? Just, hey, let me make sure. Let me look. Can y'all see? Y'all with me? Make sure you're with me, baby. Uh, it's about to get boring as hell for you guys who failed all your history class. You didn't think you would need sociology. You didn't think the world would get so jacked up that you would need sociology and a better understanding of what in the hell is going on out here in the world. Okay. I know, I know you didn't, but we back. Okay. We back to your eighth grade sociology class. So we're going to talk about uh, the matriarchy. Okay. So let me get this back up real quick. I want to put it back up so y'all can, y'all can see it. All right. Let me get it popping, baby. Let me, He's on back up there at the front, man. But I just want to make sure y'all can see me seeing y'all. Hit the number one button if you can hear me. Okay? Hit the number one button if you can hear me. And uh, let me, let me, let me get it up there. Bam. There we go. All right. So I'm at a simple Wikipedia site. Easy to understand. All right? Um, what is a matriarchy? And, I'm a, and, you know, we gave you the warm-up. I explained to you what I was talking about. Where are we going on this, right? What's the whole point? Why do I preach masculinity? Why is it important to maintain masculinity in your society? Shout out to my man, Simple Shit TV. Always good to have you. Y'all make sure y'all go to his channel. He needs another 300 people to get 1,000 people, people, which will allow him to get monetized. 
I take personal pride in helping that young man, you know, and, and get to where he is. And I look forward, let me say this, I put something up on my community tab. I would like to begin to help other young men, especially broadcasters, build your channels up. So if that means I let you take my, my channel for, you know, 10, 15 minutes and do a broadcast and do a simulcast on your channel, I'm cool with that. I'm a builder. I, I don't I don't hide it. I divide it. I want I want to make sure everybody around me can eat. All my friends are taken care of. Those of you guys who read my books, what do I say? I said this. I say I take care of my friends and I fuck over my enemies. I'm not a turn the cheek type dude. You fuck with me, I'm gonna fuck you up. But if you my friend, I'm gonna take care of you. And once I'm your friend, I'm your friend forever. All I ask for is loyalty. That's it. You see, loyalty. That's it. Loyalty is all I need. And if you can put some respect on that, that's even better. You ain't even got to fucking like me is what I'm saying. As long as you're loyal. I got women in my life. As long as they fucking loyal, I don't give a fuck if they like me or not. That's where I'm at. Ex-wife, baby mama, whoever it is. Current girlfriend, you ain't got to fucking like me. <laughs> as long as you're loyal. But the minute you turn your back, the minute you side with my enemies, you're my fucking enemy. You understand? That said, I got a lot of guys who've been here for a minute. A lot of guys who've helped me behind the scenes, even if it's just, you know, putting in a good word and saying things or whatever, you know, I, my door is always open to these gentlemen. I want to help you build your broadcast up. Again, I told y'all, I'm not going to be here forever. You see what I mean? It's already be, been three years. But the thing is, you guys don't understand, I've been doing this on Facebook since 2011. So it's a long time I've been getting to know the internet. 12 years in total, active, real active. And so, um, you know, my thing is, I just want to help out, help recreate myself, just like I train my sons to take my place and be better men than me. I want to do my very best to help you guys uh, create more broadcasters who are going to fill you up who are going to give you more bricks and more mortar and somebody might come up with the plumbing and the electric. I got the bricks. They might come up with the, with the foundation and the wood framing. And so we get these brilliant minds together and on this internet, we take it over, but with positivity and building and, and masculine reinforcement, that's what I want. So my door is open. My email is out there. You guys know me, but anyway, let's go ahead and get this thing cracking. So the matriarchy is a social system with, hold the primary which women hold the primary power positions and roles of authority in a broader sense it can also extend to moral authority listen okay social privilege and control of property so what is that saying it's saying the matriarchy is when women hold the positions of power and they hold the roles of authority that includes moral authority. In other words, Jesus, social privilege. They get all the good shit and they control the property. They control the wealth. Okay? That, that's what it is. The, the, it may differ a little bit, but that's it. Here's the thing you got to understand. There's never been a successful matriarchy throughout the history of the world. Now, I want to slide down to something because we ain't going to be here all goddamn day. Okay? This is... Okay, so we're talking about history's distribution. What does that mean? In this particular section of this Wikipedia page, they're going to talk about, do it, does a true matriarch exist? I, don't trust me. Look at the words. Most anthropologists hold that there are no known societies unambiguously matriarchal. What does that mean? That means... We, we know for sure that there's there's no ambiguity. We know for sure this is a this is run by women. The power is held by women. Okay, uh, these anthropologists, according to these anthropologists that whose names are listed right here, out of Yosio, Sulfur, and Page, no true make your matriarch is known to actually exist. It. Think about that. Okay. The historical record contains no primary sources on any society which is dominated by uh, women dominate. Why is that? 
because all those things I just explained to y'all earlier. Shout out to my man Errol here. One father can feed seven children, but seven children cannot feed one father. Boy, that's a good one. Think about that, though. Why is it? It's because of the things that I told you earlier, and it has a lot to do with power, which is something I'm going to close on when I get to it. So when you hear me talking about what real power is, go ahead and click in and we're going to talk. Okay? Listen. There are some disagreements and possible exceptions. A belief that women's rule preceded men's rule was, according to Haviland, held by many 19th century intellectuals. The hypothesis, the hypothesis survived. In other words, they didn't have any facts to back it up. The scientific method, they, didn't, <laughs> they just thought it right? The hypothesis survived into the 20th century, but was notably advanced in context by feminism, especially second wave feminism. feminism. But here's, here's the thing. The idea that what? That women rule first, but the hypothesis mostly dis, mo, is mostly discredited today. Most experts saying that it was never true. In other words, even when they thought that women might have used to rule, they said, no, that didn't happen. It never happened. And so they did a historical study in, by region. And what did they show? The same goddamn thing I just told y'all. Shout out to my man, Big Boss Real Talk. Listen to this. This is what they said about matriarchies, the women ruling in the Middle East, in, in, in ancient Near East. Listen to this. The Cambridge Ancient History of 1975 stated that the predominance of a supreme goddess is probably a reflection from the practice of matriarchy, which at all times characterized the Elamite civilization, uh, which centered uh, in what is now um, right off the, uh, it, it's, 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 it's along the Persian Gulf, all right, you see the map there, centered in the far west and southwest modern day Iran, stretching from the lowlands of what is now uh, Kazakhstan and Elam province, as well as a small part of southern Iraq, the modern name Elam stems from the Sumerian transliteration Elam. But what does it say about it? The Elamite civilization, to a greater, greater or lesser degree, before the practice, was overthrown by a patriarchy. You see that? Even <laughs> this matriarchal society, which they found, was over, where women ruled, was overthrown by a patriarchy. Because women, what? They don't hold true power. And I'm explaining you what your true power is in a minute. The, in Europe, okay? Tysius, who was a Roman historian and politician, okay? He's, he's regarded as one of the greatest Roman historians by modern scholars. He claimed in his book, Germania, Germania, that in the nations of Seton, okay, where Germanic people lived, right, and that German, you get it, y'all get it, y'all smart. Um, a woman is 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 the ruling sex, okay. But guess what happened to them? They got overthrown by the Romans. Uh, 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 these other places, uh, these other European countries. This is in uh, Eastern Europe has been frequently discussed as a matriarchal society before it was overthrown by a patriarch. A patriarch. Are y'all starting to see a pattern here? Huh? The reason they know is because they had artwork, that was, uh, including goddess art, connecting the moon and menstrual cycles and agricultural seasons and life and death. Survival of the simp says masculinity is heterosexual man's God energy. Amen to that. But do you hear, are you, are you guys starting to see... A pattern here. When you start letting women rule, your society gets weak because your men get lazy. That's what happened on the West Coast of Africa. Think about it. Okay? Here's another one. Um, China. In one of their cultures, let's, let's look at it. The Musou culture, which is in China near Tibet, 
is frequently described as matriarchal. The term matriannual lineage, lineage or matriennial is sometimes used, and while more accurate, still doesn't reflect the full complexity of, a, of their social organization. In fact, it is not easy to categorize the Mosio culture within traditional Western definitions. They have aspects of matriarchal culture. Women are often the head of the house. Inheritance is through the female line, and the women make business decisions. However, unlike in true matriarchal political power, tends to be in the hands of males, indicating that some time ago, they were overthrown by the patriarchy. <laughs> Shout out to the patriarchy. Are y'all starting to see a pattern here? Are you starting to see a pattern in India? In, in India, of communities, rational constitution and scheduled tribes, some are matriarchal, some are matrilineal and thus have been known to be more egalitarian. And what does egalitarian mean? That means the men and the women, they like black the black community. The men and the women get along, and the women have say-so, and all that shit you know that y'all do over there in the black, the blackity black community, not over here in Uncle D's house. But nevertheless, according to the interviewer, uh, uh, in, uh, in, in India has a matriarchal society. My man Toxic Reality Show said the woman king is a joke. Right. That's why they got their ass whooped. That's why we got our ass whooped in Africa, right? You better had traded. You better went in there and got them slaves, and we're going to take you. But let's keep listening. You either sell them or we're going to steal you and take you over there, king uh, and queen. But this may be, listen to this. In, in, in Kerala, Nairs, the Brahmins, and some of these other villages, and Muslims of the North Kalabar and Kanarte, Burnts, and Bill used to be matrilineal, but now they're patriarchal. Are you starting to see? Are you starting to see a pattern here? Huh? Are you starting to see a pattern? They talk about Native Americans. And what do we know about the Native Americans? Who took who came in and the United States, Europeans with their patriarchy. You see what I'm saying? Now, let's slide down to, I want to go down to this because I want to talk about religion. Because religion, specifically, some of our main religions, our religions do what? Huh? Our religions are fundamental to, 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 our, to our, our culture, okay? And I want to talk to you about something that our ancestors knew that we didn't know. Now, in this Wikipedia page, they refer to it as exclusionary religions. Why is that? What did our ancestors know that we didn't know? Are y'all with me? Y'all bored? Am I sexist? Am I sexist? Let me know if I'm a sexist. Am I, what do they call it? What's all the words? Come on, give it to me. Chauvinistic. I'm just telling you what's in the book. I'm just telling you what these scholars have said. Y'all mad? Let me know if I'm a chauvinist. I'm just reading what's on the Wikipedia page. I just told you some stuff, and I'm reading what's on the Wikipedia page. I know it's boring as hell. I've been talking for an hour and a half about ain't got nothing to do <laughs> with how you can get rich. I'm just trying to help you find peace of mind and understand that if you are on your masculine journey, then you're on the right journey. We need more men on that masculine journey. Right. I'm just telling you what the books say. Look at look at this. Some theology. Let's talk about, you know, all your different religions, Jesus and Allah and Muhammad, great pop, peace be unto him. Let's see what they said. Moses is in here too. Some theologies and the, the, theocracies limit or forbid women from being in civil government or public leadership. I wonder why that is or forbid them from voting. I wonder why that is. You tell me, effectively criticizing and forbidding the matriarchy. I wonder why. What do they know that we don't know? What are these ancient civilizations who, and the men, these scholars from the past, what do they know that we don't know about what happens when you give women power? What do they know that we don't know? Huh? 
You just read the history. What did I just tell you? When women are empowered, men become lazy. And the society becomes weak. It ain't me. Where the Muslims at? Let's leave what the Muslims say. In Islam, some Muslim scholars hold that female political leadership is prohibited. According to uh, Annie Sophie Renal, the prohibition has been attributed to a hadith of Muhammad, the great prophet, the founder and last prophet of Islam. The hadith says, according to Ronald Ro Roald, a people which has a woman as a leader will never prosper. Why is that? Why did the prophet Muhammad say that? Huh? What do you think he knew that we didn't know? Huh? What do you think the great prophet Muhammad knew that we didn't know about a society that allows women to rule? What happens to that society? When you allow a matriarchy to come in, what happens? Huh? Look, you can be mad at me all you want to. All I'm doing is telling you what men have figured out in Western society and what our historians know to be true and even our, our, our biblical beliefs. It, look, the vast majority of the world is either what? They are either Muslim, they're either Jewish, or they're Christian, or, or they're Buddhist, or they're Hindu, or something like that, okay? So you heard what the Muslims had to say. Shout out to my man, big man, 7917. In Genesis, the Lord gave, the Lord God said to woman, what is this you have done? The woman said, the serpent deceived me and I ate. I'm just asking y'all to read what you said you've been reading. Read your Bible. Read your Quran. Read your Torah. What does it say? In rabbinical Judaism, Judaism, amongst Orthodox leaders, in, in a position beginning before Israel became a modern state, has been what for, has been that for women to hold public office in Israel would threaten the state's existence. According to educator Tova Hartman, who reports the view has wide consensus. What did they know? What are these ancient Jewish scholars know about what happens when you allow women to rule, when you allow the patriarchy to take over. What happens? I just explained to you all the nature of men. Men smell weakness. They will prey upon other weak men in other weak societies. You don't want to, you want to know how men are? Go into a prison. Go into a local prison and see how men act. Go to a battlefield where ain't no rules and see how men act. See how treacherous and savage men can be. Let's go on and read what the Jewish people said. When Israel ratified the International Women's Equality Agreement, known as SIDWA, according to Marsha Freeman, it reserved non-enforcement for any religious communities that forbid women from sitting on religious courts. In other words, if your religion say we don't let women sit on, we're not going to force that on them. According to Freeman, the tribunals that adjudicated marital issues are by religious law and custom entirely male. Shout out to my man Salty Ball. He said, Book of Genesis. But unfortunately, today's these same ladies are still swallowing serpents by left the fruit. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> they swallowing serpents, man. Men's superiority is fundamental tenet of Judaism. I wonder why. According to Freeman, governments, governments have been less than hospitable to women's high-level participation. I wonder why these Jewish-run governments have been less than hospitable to women's high-level participation. I wonder why the Prophet Muhammad said that uh, when a woman holds political office, or, or, or it's for, for forbidden for women to hold political office. Why is that? You got the Muslims. You got the Jewish people, These all these great scholars. They've had thousands of years to look over their doctrines. 
And they all have come to the conclusion that if you want to have a strong society that lasts the test of time, you can't let women be in charge in, 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 of men. Why is that? Why is that? It's for the reasons I told you. Let's let's it, it, it summarize it, but that's it. They've come to these conclusions. I just explained why. Okay, all the Buddhists, that's the peaceful religion, right? What is a Buddha, Buddha in Buddhism? <laughs> according to Karma Lishi Tusmo, some hold that Buddha allegedly hesitated to admit women to the Sangha of the Sanji because their inclusion would hasten the demise of the monastic community and the very teachings of Buddhism itself. That's what, that's what the great Buddha said. Shout out to big man 7917, Genesis 317, because you have heeded the voice of your wife and have eaten from the tree of which I commanded you, saying you shall not eat of it. Curse is the ground for your sake. That's what your Christian Bible is saying. Thank you so much, brother. Following women leads to, dis look, it ain't me. You mad at what I'm saying? Be mad, be mad at Jesus. Jesus said that. That's in your Bible. This quote right here is in your Bible. I'm just, I'm just telling this story, baby. Okay, I'm just laying it down where the cows can eat it. You understand? There has been a, any society that has allowed women to rule and become a matriarchy has crumbled. And I'm going to bring it home to you in a minute. What's happened to the black community over the last 50, since 1955? Talk to me. Talk to me. What was going on in 19, before 1955? Come on now. What was going on? We were the most married group of people in America. Men ran the households. We were the most married group of people in America. And then what happened? Some kind of way. Between 1955 and 1965 and 75 and 85 and 95 and all the way up to where we are right now, we became the most unmarried group of people in America. And who runs the community right now? Who is the backbone of the black community right now? Family? Women? Matriarchal rule. And what do you see happening to us? We are being overrun by the dominant society and it's scattering us to the wind. Do you see what's going on here? Is this making sense now? Do you see now why I say you have to emphasize masculinity in your sons? You got to maintain your manhood in this woman-run society by putting extra emphasis on doing manly things. Challenge, now, lifting weights is not enough. You got to get out there and there's got to be another motherfucker in front of you that's trying to knock your ass out or twist your arms off in jujitsu or something. I'm not saying go out there and crack your skull open, but you got you to gotta maintain your masculinity. Even somebody as old as I am, 48, about to be 49 years old. Because you never stop being a man. And you always need to project masculinity. From a boy that's 13 year old to my son, whether they whether they three or 13 or 35 or 39 or whatever, you still got to practice your masculinity in a society that's dominated by women. But we ain't done yet. The, the, the Buddhists, the Hindus, amongst Hindus in India, India's most extensive all-male Hindu nationalist organization has debated whether women can ever be a Hindu nationalistic politi political leader, but without coming to a conclusion. Think about that. This is all based on their religions. So you heard history, all the matriarchies fail. Whether it's the Near East or Europe, they get invaded, they fail. We know what happened to our African brothers. Now, we've talked about what? Islam, 
They said women shouldn't be in charge. These Jewish people, these Orthodox leaders, they say women should be in charge. It's the downfall of your society. Buddha said, yeah, I can't let them in. They just going to destroy what I got going on when you start empowering women. The Hindus saying the same thing. What about the Protestant Christians? Huh? What about that? In Protestant Christianity, considered only historical in 1588. Mary Stewart Subject wrote the fast trumpet against the most regiment of women. According to Scalingi, the work is perhaps of a gynocracy or a gynocracy. And Knox was the most notorious writer on the subject. <laughs> I bet they didn't like him. According to 1878 edition of Knox's objection to any woman reigning and having empire over men was theological. And it was against na it was against nature for women to bear rule, superiority, dominion, or empire above any realm, nation, or city. And Knox's argument was partly grounded on a statement of the Apostle Paul against women teaching or usurping over men. Okay? According to Maria Zena Conclaves, Knox argued that women being a national ruler was unnatural and that women were unfit, uh, ineligible for the post. Think about that. This is one of your great Christian writers. And he's basing it on something that the Apostle Paul said. Who's the Apostle Paul? Paul. He spread the teachings of Jew, uh, uh, Jesus in the first century. Generally regarded as one of the most important figures of the apostolic age. He founded several Christian communities in minor Asia. Think about that. I'm just saying got to like Jesus. So I'll be mad at Jesus if you mad. So, you know, that's kind of where we at. That That's where we at. So you see it now. I hope you all, if you, if you get what I'm saying, why it's important. Why is it important? And some of y'all may not get the point, but let me add this on. And I'm going to put the link in the chat room. I'd like to hear what you brothers have to say. If any, if you feel like this is toxic masculinity, then that's fine. Come on in and talk about it. I'm okay. I want to hear what y'all have to say. I, I hope. It, you know. Even if you disagree, I hope you heard me. I put the link to this in the chat room. Just look up matriarchy on Wikipedia. It's right there. But what I want you to understand is this, and I want to talk about real power, okay? Because some of y'all got bullshit definitions of what power is. Let me tell you what real power is. The link is in the chat room. Tag that, that link to the top. Let's get the, let's get the bullpen filled up. I know I done made some of you male feminists mad. Y'all don't never come up in here. Y'all always go to other people's pages. I like to talk to you. I want to hear. I want you to prove me wrong. I would enjoy that. I like a good conversation about something other than that white girl y'all been trying to talk about over the past two goddamn weeks. Let's not talk about her no more. She got enough attention. Other but I'm gonna put the link in here. Trying to talk about over the past two goddamn. Okay, so the link is in there. You guys want to come in and chop it up? Let's do that. I see it's already filling up. You got to show your face. That's what we do here. We don't hide out. We not we we not bandits. <laughs> we not bandits on this page. We don't do that. I don't need to see you. Yeah, we like brave men. Cause see, part of masculinity is being brave. See, part of a real man is gonna show his face. He's not gonna hide out. Okay. That's what we do here, and that's that's the thing I like. Malcolm didn't hide from you. Eldridge Cleaver didn't hide from you. Martin Luther didn't hide from you. They knew the risk. They were up for the screw. They had to deal with the scrutiny of their people and both their friends and their enemies. I don't hide from you. 
But what can we get? What's the conclusion of all that history and religious? What you need to understand, what did I say? What was the preface that I said? I said that what? What happens when you give women power? The men become lazy. They give up power. They no longer have to suffer the consequences of bad decisions. Why? Because the women are in power. It's their fault. In effect, men become weak. And what does that tell you? And this is going to sound simple, but if you really think about what I'm saying, you'll understand it. True power is the ability to make another person physically submit to your will. Damn. Think about that. True power is the ability to make another person submit to your will. Write that shit down. Nobody else is going to give it to you like that. That's true power. Well, what do you mean? Are you saying the president, he might be old, but he has power? No, he has the fucking military. He has the goddamn police. You understand the difference? Think about that. You want to know, you know what real power is? Go to the motherfucking penitentiary. Now, he can make them submit on an individual uh, basis, or it can be done through physical force like weapons. Or you can convince someone else to do it, but that's not power. That's influence. If I get the police to go whoop your ass, that's not me flexing power. That's me having the influence of 911. If I get some mercenaries to run in your country and shoot you down, that's the influence of my money. But if you can't do it yourself, you don't have that power. And that's why women can never hold power. Because men are better fighters because we are more powerful on an individual basis and we're trained to be better killers on an individual basis. Now that's going to fly over a lot of y'all here. Some of y'all can't reconcile that. that that's just like, no, we're e Yo, that equality shit has got you fucked up. Okay? Who would you rather listen to? The man who can exact a toll in front of you and put you to death or the woman telling the man to put you to death? Who do you fear the most? You get rid of his ass first because the bitch can't do nothing once you kill his ass. That's, that, that let you kill the power source. Fuck with the bitch say, kill this motherfucker. And the bitch can say whatever she want to say. Did that make sense? <laughs> In ghetto ass terms. You understand? You see that? Did that, that make, you got a big motherfucker that's like six foot six, swole, straight up killer. You pop that motherfucker and it don't matter what the bitch say after that. The bitch, yeah, all right, bitch. The motherfucker dead now. It's just me and you. You see what I'm saying? So where's the true power lie? You can be a rich man, a rich country, and a motherfucker with a great army can come invade your shit. What did your richness do? What did your money do for you? That ain't power. Having money is not power. Having political clout is not power. Your ability to make another person or individual or group submit to you physically, that's power. Whether you're using your own natural ability or physical force or weapons, that's power. Convincing someone, that's merely influence. Whether the bitch promised to give you some pussy if you beat up somebody to talk, that's influence. That's not power. And y'all get it twisted. You got a lot of little men out here with no fucking power influencing you. Little short motherfuckers that couldn't bust a grape in the fruit fight influencing you. Make them prove themselves. Big man 7917 said, one Timothy, Tim, Tim, Timothy 2, 11 and 13. Let a woman learn in silence with all submission. And I do permit a woman to teach and to have authority over man, but to be silenced for Adam was formed first in Eve. Salty nuts, book of powwow, seven and one. <laughs> a, bow, a, bow, a bow with a knee, a, 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 a relinquish of thine Will is power. The universal currency of powwow is pain. Yeah. Put a motherfucker in enough pain. They'll do what you say. That's why I grew up fighting, man. 
My sons grew up doing martial arts. They're strong. They've been trained to dominate and kill if need be. They've been trained to dominate and kill by men who've trained other or thousands of other men to dominate and kill. You see? Think about that. Think about that. All a woman can do is manipulate your ass with sex and food and guilt and shame and shit. That's not power. That's just influence. So why in the hell would you then allow women to dominate you if all she has is influence over you? Just think about that. It makes no sense. And when other men see that you're so easily dominated by and influenced by pussy and food and shit like they come invade your goddamn shit. And that's where we at, goddammit. it. This is Uncle D. We'll be right back with the bullpen. Y'all hit the number one button. Yeah. There you go. Uh-huh, I like that clap. It's not bad to be like she and her. Cadillac with three niggas in the, in the car smoking weed. I bet we came back. What's happening? <laughs> anyway, man, welcome, man. I got my nigga Black Wall Street is back. That's what the fuck I'm talking about, baby. Look at you. <laughs> he done made it back, baby. That's what I'm talking about. That's my uh-huh. point, man. Oh, yeah, you're in the... I love this little guy, man. Shout out to Black Wall Street. Big shout out to some of the regulars. We got the reg Alvin, I know you got... Look, I'm here for the disagreements, man. My man, House of Kung Fu, presidential, I believe it's presidential, intellectual, and my Haitian representative, Sapa Say Sigma Black Ronin. Shout out to you. And of course, I know, I know I mentioned Mr. Alvin. So look, fellas, look, I, I know, I know all the, all the toxic masculinity. This has been two hours of toxic masculinity. Uh, but fuck it. What do y'all want to add to this conversation? Be mad. I don't care. I'm just saying what I said. Uh, my man, House of Kung Fu, you first up. What are your thoughts on this conversation, brother? What would you like to add? Or take away from whatever you feel. Let's hear. Man, uh, first of all, um, I just want to uh, thank you for, first of all, excuse my language for not giving a fuck, right? Because, uh, right yeah. you know, if if you did and try to placate to our emotions and try to, to get us to be your friend, um, mm-hmm. a lot of us, especially who are real masculine, uh, probably would have been turned off. Um, For me personally, because you didn't care about how I felt, it actually made me gravitate towards you more. And um, I I don't usually come up in here, man, I'm I'm just kind of laid back and, you know, just do my thing. But I had to really come and say my piece today because of what martial arts taught me specifically Mm -hmm. right um i'm gonna be straight up right i'm a recovering you know simp right we all are we all are recovering simps welcome to the phone but go ahead go ahead man you know because i I didn't even know what a simp was Mm -hmm. right until i started listening to people like ks listening to people like you um I didn't even know it was abnormal to not have a father in a home, you know? Oh, yeah. Wow. I just, yeah, I just thought that yeah. was normal. And um, but something deep within me, within my genes, within my X chromosome told me to get into martial arts. Mm-hmm. And um, my dad was a champion. And I remember something that my mom let me do whatever I want, but for some reason she hated when I went to karate class. She didn't mm-hmm. like me. 
right? Yeah. I would, I would get punished. I would get verbally abused, physically abused to the point where I had to sneak out of the wow. house and walk miles to find my martial arts teachers. And now that I'm older, I understand why, because they reinforced that masculinity in me to the point where when I came back home, I started, I started to stand up for myself, surrounded right. by that masculinity, surrounded by that power. And you really made me want to talk today because <clears throat> that, that energy being in that dojo, surrounded by a man who I know, if I say one wrong thing, he'll take me out. But for some reason, he was able to be calm and cool. Only yep. when you pushed him to that level would he take it there. Um, that served me yeah. Yeah. way past my, my whole life. And um, I'm giving it to my sons now. And like, I understand what true power is. True power isn't just yeah. throwing around willy nilly. It's the fact that I know I can do something, but I'm choosing not to hurt you i'm choosing to walk away because i know if i need to take it there i could destroy you right and yeah thank you or, or maim them or maim them so bad they, they, they just want to walk away even if you lose they like don't ever want to fight that dude it's too close to my life man that, i'm glad you brought that up because see here's the thing and i and i'm and look there's plenty of ways to challenge yourself but i told you guys you guys know i've been on this jujitsu journey journey for about two and a half years or two years now and uh here's here's a funny picture right i want to show y'all this and then we're gonna go to presidential intellectual so this is my ass saturday morning i try to do some manly shit every day you see what i mean uh i try to get up and challenge myself every day when my body allows it this is me taking my big ass to jujitsu on saturday morning okay on my way not jujitsu kaju kimbo and and this is a different kind of martial arts they fuck you up. They kick you in the balls. They poke you in the eyes. This ain't the type of, this is not Shotokan or Kung Fu. They are trying to kill your ass in the first five seconds. And so this is me on the way back. I was used as a demonstration dummy. And my sensei hit me through the in the fucking mouth. And the other side of my lip has a hole in it. There's a hole from here all the way through my mouth. You see what I'm saying? It healed up. I, I can still feel a bump right here. I'm laughing like, yeah, you see what I'm saying? I'm a whole lawyer. What the fuck am I doing? I'm like, God damn, look at this shit. I could tooth would lose, teeth would loose and shit. But you know what? The thing is, I'm okay. And I'm going back again next Saturday. You understand what I'm saying? But some of y'all like, I ain't doing that. That don't make sense. But it's one of those challenges. And shit happens. You might look just like. The fucking, you might lose your job. You're going to quit or you're going to go get another job. I might lose a couple of teeth, but I still, still be here talking like a snaggle tooth motherfucker to y'all saying the same shit. These are, this is, I know it's like, this is crazy. You crazy, Uncle D. You crazy. Part, of, I know it sounds crazy, but it's not. It's the challenge of it. It's the fear that you got to overcome. That's what courage is. That's why the number one component of masculinity is courage. And that's why I have zero respect for motherfuckers that's on here talking shit to the whole world and won't show their face to their people. You understand what I'm saying? As far as these YouTube streets, all right? And because most women have never had to exhibit true courage, we shouldn't be listening to them when they give us advice on uh, masculine things because they can only speak from a female survivalistic perspective. Their whole job is to survive. But anyway, thank you so much, House of Kung Fu, and I appreciate you, man. You will welcome back anytime. Uh, my man, presidential intellectual masculinity perceived. Welcome to the broadcast. Let me get G Money in. He said, China, Russia, and Mexico is getting ready to teach this exact lesson. Yeah, the hard way. I agree with that. Uh, and, and so, uh, presidential, in, I'm, bro, that's a long, I'm going to just call you presidential intellectual. Bro, what you got to talk to us, bro? Talk to us. All right. So, All right. can y'all hear me? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We we can't see you too good because you're sitting way back over there. If you can zoom got, in a little better, it'd be angles. great to have you to the camera. I got, I got the language. Yeah. Oh, uh, okay. My bad. It, okay, that's cool. Do it. Go talk to me. All right, so I have a show as well, right? The first episode of my show is called Adam, the original simp. The name of my show is mm. called Survival of the Simp. The original sin is not 
or the root of all evil is Hold not on. the love I'm of money. Not now. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. The root, that's some good titles, man. Go ahead. The root of all evil is a man breaking his masculine frame, a.k.a. simping. Doing mm-hmm. any activity that's not masculine is what I consider simping. And mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I've literally rehabilitated myself and helped several other men rehabilitate themselves from simp activities, whether it's within the relationship of dealing with women or money or success. I literally rehabilitated my cousin from the corner of my apartment on an herb mattress to making a couple hundred grand a year in a matter of months, all because mm-hmm. I did the work myself first and taught him the same thing. Praise I God. literally overcame homelessness in 2014 to making a couple hundred grand myself, which is not a lot of money in the grand scheme of things, more money than most men are going to make. Oh, that, that is wonderful. Sure, That's outstanding. Sure will alone. So God. the steps to my process were as such. I first got my life together, and then I came to the conclusion that no women should be treating me any other way other than the king treatment, so to speak. So the friend zone no longer applies to me because I'm I'm mm-hmm. too good of a catch. I don't have any children. I'm still relatively young, and women who lived at home with their mama was trying to put me in the friend zone. So I literally mm-hmm. researched like wh- why do women put men in the friend zone, and that took me down the path of the quote unquote red pill. The conclusion I've come to on why the red pill is quote unquote non-effective is because we try to take God out of it when it's literally the, the will of God. Maintain mm-hmm. your masculinity, aka your God energy. The world will bring everything to you abundantly. Cup runneth over. I am living proof of that. And other men I mentored are, men, are literal proof of that. And this applies to every man on earth. If you bleed blood, these rules apply to you. The issue is that even amongst our own communities, we don't want to set the rules. And we don't, we don't want to maintain the rules. Everybody talking about the rules. Are, are, we just had a man on, on in the interview not too long ago, Jonathan Majors, talking about masculinity is fluid. That is nonsense. But since he has the platform and he has the means and he got the muscles, then people listen to him. We have I to figure that, out. I wonder if his masculinity was fluid in Rikers Island over the over the weekend. I wonder if that exactly. Was, uh, so every guy, simp is guy. being punished with extreme prejudice in 20, 2023. If you do any sec- simp activities, hell is coming for you. I hope he wasn't on Earth and, and yeah. afterlife. Yeah. It's inevitable. There is nothing you can do to, to avoid it. We have too many examples of this. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you so much, brother. Big man seven nine one seven says simp, a man who gives a woman finances and attention usually for sexual favors from a woman only not to receive any from, from her at all. There's some dudes that do it. They don't expect nothing in return. I got to go to my man, Black Wall Street, baby. Let me put you veteran, Sigma Black Ronin and Mr. Allen and Albert. I got to go to Black Wall Street. How you doing, brother? Good to see you in here, man. Talk oh, man, to you man. know, uh, mother got his simp ship fully deactivated. That's I what I'm talking about. Every day. There we go. Go ahead, yeah, brother. Cool, man, nothing major. Mm-hmm. I just, uh, you know, I always watch the show, Uncle D. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I watch every time you come on. I just had to come on because, man, you was, you, was, you was saying, so I was like, damn, we going in tonight. Yeah. But anyway. Uh, but did you understand what I, but, but go ahead, brother, please. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Go ahead. I was just, I was going to agree uh, and piggyback off what presidential uh, intellectual said about mm-hmm. maintaining your masculine frame. All a masculine frame is, is money, muscles, and gain. And uh, Rich Cooper does an excellent job teaching about that in his book, The Unplug Alpha. Mm-hmm. However, uh, a fool is just simply being a fool. A simp is just simply uh, being a fool for women, man. And I mean, well, you know, I, the uh, thing is, and, and presidential intellectual also said this you can get that in the Bible, too. Oh, hold on. 40 Cal Hal is my hero. Hold on a minute, man. How long you been up in here, man? How long you been up in here, 40 Cal Hal? <laughs> I don't think you can hear me. Can y'all hear me? Uh, okay, I don't know, but 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 go ahead, Black. I look at that, y'all. He knows something that a lot. I've been of watching you for like three years. Over. That's what I'm talking about, man. I'm glad you guys are still here, Black Wall Street. Please finish up what you were saying. I was just gonna add on, kind of piggyback to what you were saying. If if you look at that Bible and you really read it with that red pill lens, as they say, and just strip away the emotion and see it for what it is. It's a lot of it's basically replete with simping, right? Samson was a simp. Right here. Uh, who else was a simp? And I did a series on this. Samson was a simp. Uh, uh, King Solomon was a simp. Adam was a simp. If you really look, even the, it was the one that took the man's wife. Was it King David? He was a simp too. You see what I'm saying? Abraham. 
I, I, all of these guys, these, if, if you see their shortcomings, you see what I mean? Just, just something to think about, man. If you, you really look, see, I look at this whole red pill thing. It's really just old men talking to young men like they do back in, back in the day, telling young men what these women are all about. And a lot of you women, a lot of young men just were confused because they didn't have that, that masculine, the, the old guard around to talk to them because they were, you were depleted of those men in the eighties and nineties. They went to jail. They weren't around. Women had children without husbands. They ran them off. There's a lot going on. Uh, but anyway, thank you, Black Wall Street. Let me go to 40 Cal Hal Hero, and then we'll go to go to some of my vets, and then we'll pick Gerald up. 40 Cal Hal, where'd you get that nickname from, sir? Tell us, sir, where'd you get that name from? 40 Cal Hal. He must have a delay. Can you hear me, 40 Cal Hal? Um, Sunday service thing that you had. Oh, yeah. yeah, man. So you guys who don't know, 40 Cal Hal. And we call him 40 Cal Hal because he was a, he was a, he was a, a, well, you tell the story, brother, tell the story. Tell us what you learned about this great uh, American, black American uh, fighting man. Go ahead. He got a little bit of a delay. I don't think he can hear us, man. He what would you delay, but yeah, yeah, 40 Cal Hal, he was a hero, man. He risked his life in the army for us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can hear you, but that's a delay. Yeah. But what would you like to add to the conversation? Well, he must be way over there across the water or something, man. But hey, we, we don't. Yeah, I'm just, I'm not even paying attention to what's going on in the mental oh, sphere. No. Oh, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. We going we gonna go ahead and go to somebody else right quick, but don't yeah, just, I'm just hang trying in to there. better myself, man. I'm trying to get my stuff together, and I'm not worried about what's going on and all these arguments. All right, we we gonna give you a minute right, to fine. get your the internet together. Praise God, praise Moses. Anyway, praise Moses. My man, a uh, salty ball says this. He said, "Book of Judges seven and one, freedom at freedom <laughs> MMT. The only masculinity that is fluid." Is who departs from my loins <laughs> and onto thine face. <laughs> and thus truly, the fruit of my loin, boy. Now get your ass out of here, boy. Look, let me tell you. Look, the uh the visiting pastor Salty Balls is on one. Y'all better leave him alone. He will wear you out in these super chats. Let's get somebody. Alvin, we passed you up for a minute. What are your thoughts on this conversation? Then we're going to go to my man, Mr. Allen, and then Sigma Ronan. Go ahead. What are your thoughts, man? Uh, salute to you, Uncle D, the panel in the chat. Yes, Thank you, guys. Yeah. Um, really appreciate everybody. Uh, very well timed. Absolutely mm -hmm. needed. Your message is uh, heard loud and clear. It needs to be amplified. Um, and I'm going to continue over on my side to basically help with practical ways that guys can can yeah. seek out and find the masculinity they need because you know one thing that i did realize is that again and i've said it before we've all managed to get here because we were searching for answers in some way shape or form mm -hmm. some more than others but but that's how we all got here and i think that that is kind of the basic uh foundation of what everyone absolutely positively needs yeah. to take away from the space so i appreciate you sir and uh and no problem, like man. i said no. thanks for your message no I'll problem. And let me there. let me give you a hint on something. See, lifting weights is fun, but that don't scare you. It's great. You jump under there, but lifting, you know, 210 pounds, and then the next day, I'm gonna put 225. I'm scared. That's not scaring you. Yeah. If you guys want to challenge yourself, if you want to really do masculine shit, do something that invokes a little bit of fear that you have to overcome, a little uncomfortableness. You see what I'm saying? Something that requires you to actually do something like somebody else in front of you, the risk of embarrassment. I'm telling you, I advocate jujitsu. Not, I'm not talking about mixed martial arts when somebody's pounding you in your face because your ass got to go to work on Monday. I don't want to get beat up on Friday like you've been fighting at the bar. But jujitsu requires for you to do what? It requires for you to stand in front of somebody who could be taller than you, smaller than you, bigger than you, stronger than you, younger than you, older than you, and every one of them, it could even be a female, and they could whoop your ass. And that's going to hopefully, that makes you a little bit afraid. That, that should frighten your ego a little bit. 
because you ain't the man you thought you were when a 15 year old pins your ass in the Kimura. You understand what I'm saying? And makes you tap out. You are not the man you thought you were when that young lady puts you in that goddamn triangle and has you in there damn near dying. Okay, that's what I'm trying to explain y'all. When that old man that you underestimated put <laughs> wraps your ass up, takes you down, and chokes you out with an Ezekiel joke hole. Let me tell you something. The shit has happened. You understand? Like, yeah. I, I'm telling you guys, I, I love it. And it becomes addictive because you get addicted to the challenge. You understand what I'm saying? You get, it, it's, it, I guess it's like being an army vet. Uh, some of you guys who go out in the middle, some of the motherfuckers, they got to go back. They got to go back to the, to the theater of war because they get you so used to that thrill. You see what I mean? The challenge. Fuck it. We made it again. Every day after practice, fuck it, I made it again. They didn't put me to sleep again. My big ass got put to sleep in October. I'm fucking around playing with this white dude. Like, I'm going to just do this shit. Put my ass to sleep. I woke up <laughs> and had my feet in there. And I, was, I heard myself snoring coming out there. I was like, shit, I better take this shit serious. I could die. It's like, you know, if you sleep for more than 15 seconds, your ass is going to be brain dead. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Like, yeah, so it gets real serious. Now, Normal people would say this is crazy, but men who accept challenges will say, yeah, that's my shit. I'm not asking y'all to go rock climbing without ropes, okay? I'm not, I'm not even asking y'all to jump in the boxing room because you got intellectual shit to do. And y'all already ugly enough, and I don't want y'all to get no uglier than we all right. I know myself, okay? Mm -hmm. I don't want to get no uglier than I am right now. That's why I grew this beard. Because it covers up part of the ugly. <laughs> and, and also, if I may advocate. But I really um, want you guys, I do want you guys to begin to challenge yourself, not just weights and running and jogging. Actually put an opponent in front of you. Uh, my man, Big Man 797 says, simps do simp things like F women wearing Tuesday's panties on Friday. Oh, I'm done. But anyway, uh, <laughs> Alvin, thank you so much. Let me go to my man, Mr. Allen. Then we're going to go to Gerald. Uh, and then who else? Uh, I think that's. I think we made our rounds in. What? We, and, oh, Black Ronan. I got to get my man Black Ronan. Uh, Mr. Allen, what do you want to add to this conversation, man? Go ahead. Forgive me. I'm, I'm. I'm still working out in the sticks. My service is trash right now. But um, you're absolutely right. From a kid, yeah. judo, jiu-jitsu, American wrestling. Yeah. Right. Broken ribs, yeah. fractured ribs, still going. Dislocations. Oh. You name it. Yeah, been that, done that. Damn this spouse snapped some dudes on because he wouldn't tap. I'm like, okay, uh, well, your bones. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but you know, the thing is, man, I don't want you guys to stop, though. See, that's the thing. It's great to rest on our loyal. Yeah, I did that when I was young. I, I, I played football in college. or I played football in high school. But what about, what are you doing now? You stop being a man? At 22, 23, when you graduated? No, you push forward. You get better as a man the older you get because now you're more confident. Now you're like, fuck it. You see what I'm saying? Like part of the reason I'm the way I am, fuck it. Like the young man said, I like Uncle D because he just like, he don't give a shit. I'm going to tell you whether you like. I'm that old ass uncle that don't really give a shit if you like me or not. I'm still going to tell you what I know to be true. Not what I think to be true, not what I thought to be true, not some theory, not some hypothesis. I'm going to tell you what it's like to be a father in modern day and what you have to do. Because I am a father. I'm going to tell you, yeah, go out and fuck all the bitches you can if that's what you want to do. Get that shit out your system and then go find you a good woman. I'm not worried about that. Oh, but that's heathen shit. I don't give a fuck because I don't want you cheating on your wives. And I don't want you to be married and cheating like half these motherfuckers in Houston that I see. At their little spots in the middle of the day when they wife think they working and their ass is over here at 130 at the side spot. I'll be seeing them in there. You see what I'm saying? I don't want you to be those men. I want you to get all that. See, I'm giving you practice. I'm a, I'm a pragmatic, practical person. I know the nature of man. You understand what I'm saying? I am. Look, let me tell you, I've been around the worst of men. I've been around the best of men. I know you. I know you are like savage dogs allowed to run uh, free in the forest. And I know what you do. So in order for me to get you ready to be the best man you can be, I can't lie to you. Okay? Y'all got some horish tendencies. I had them too. You understand? But you got to get that out of your system in order to be good. I mean, you got to graduate. And life is short. So why am I going to lie to you? 
yeah, be the best man. And then you're cheating on your wife. You're frustrated with the bitch. Now y'all fighting at the house every time you get home, drunk, smelling like another bitch perfume with lipstick on your dick. You see what I'm saying? You trying to rush to the shower and shit before the bitch come in and hide your underwear. You throwing shit out the fucking car window, checking your car and shit like that. I know what you niggas do, man. I'm sorry. No, you, they told me not to use the word N-word no more. But y'all know what I'm talking about. I know you. You see what I'm saying? So I'm not going to lie to you about who you are. I understand the nature of you can be builders. You can bring chaos. You can be destroyers. You can be protectors. I know you. You understand what I'm saying? Black Wall Street, you read my book. I did a lot of debauchery shit. You see what I'm saying? I could, but I was I grew up around a bunch of debaucherous motherfuckers too. Gangsters and killers and shit. I got killers cooking breakfast for me. So why would I try to come to y'all? You know, yes, you need to do. No, that's not what I'm going to do. But thank you so much, Mr. Allen. Let's go to my man, Sigma Black Ronin. Shout out to Donnell Jackson. He says, uh, salty nuts misread my comment. Uh, I said salt. I said masculinity is fluid. Pow on a B phase. <laughs> unblock, <laughs> unblock freedom MMC. Okay, they they fighting in the comments section, but the super chats y'all can fight with super chats all the fuck y'all want to. Y'all can roast each other. I'm gonna read all of them. But anyway, my man, Mr. Allen, thank you so much, Black Ronin. What would you like to add to this? Talk to us, bro. I want to begin by saying Proverbs nine verse thirteen. I'm be dry snitching. I don't give a fuck. But go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, bro. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Proverbs nine verse thirteen. Yeah. Foolish woman is commerce. He is simple and knows nothing. Yeah. What, what you've been speaking on on the on matriarchy and etc. 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 Dude, it, it, you know, I don't know where to begin because it's so it's facts. It's it's, yeah. it's been our it's been in our faces, you know what yeah. I mean. And, it, as, and and uh, and we see what's ha- going to happen to this um, country uh, that we live in. Um, it's becoming weaker every day, um, mm-hmm. and these lovely ladies don't understand that. You know, you you're putting yourselves at at, at jeopardy because when there's not enough strong men, and because one you got strong men leaving because mm-hmm. just, the just the environment is is not conducive to to them, meaning they don't have a social network anymore because all the men around them are becoming weak and they can't even uh, you know even have relationships with the women with the women because the women are just toxic and just you just don't want to be around them. You just want to yeah. be around these broads. So the men are leaving those strong men are leaving the men that you do want and then the the, the men that are here have no set skills majority have no set skills to combat what's about to go down so yeah. you know, I, I, I told this, some guys this and i'm gonna tell y'all this you guys know beans and cornbread you know those two rappers beans are not rap two producers beans and cornbread y'all know paul wall slim thug yeah uh uh, uh who else my man uh mo city don you know all these h-town rappers have you ever heard of beans and cornbread you guys, any of them, beans and cornbread. So uh, they produced the, those six albums that y'all see on the internet that with my name on it. And uh, it was 2013, and I told him, I said, bro, I said his Latin culture is taking over America, and Islamic culture is going to take over Europe. And they said, no. Nah. I said, yeah. And here we are in 2020. What music do you listen to now? Y'all ain't listening to rap like that. You're not. You listen to the... Uh, you listen to a lot of Hispanic influenced music. Cardi B is hot for a reason. And it's not what you think. It's not because she sings the best. It's because the Latin culture is patriarchal. Islam is patriarchal. The Western societies, well, the Western societies are what? Well, black society used to be patriarchal. That's we dominated all the undercurrent of pop culture. And guess what happened when that faded? You got mumble rappers. And so the next culture that's coming in is taking over the, the undercurrent culture is going to be Latin culture because it's matriarchal. Listen to their music. They talk about fucking bitches, having kids, dealing with hoes. They talk about shit that we used to talk about. Listen to their love songs. If you listen to their music right now, you can hear the 90s hip-hop cadences in their music. You see what I mean? You can hear the 80s hip-hop cadences in their music because it's patriarchal. And Latin culture is coming in to dominate. It's going to be the subculture that dominates American society. 
like African American culture used to be the subculture that dominated uh, uh, America. Just think about it. And Islam is taking over Europe. You don't believe me? Go to France. Ask them French people. Just some because it's patriarchal, and we've become matriarchal. Not just white, not just black, but the whole Western society has become matriarchal. We've given women too many rights, and we've become weak, and we're going to be invaded by a bunch of strong men, not necessarily with guns and bullets and bombs, but definitely with their influence. Just think about it. You ain't got to like me, but give it 10 years, and you'll remember what I said. But uh, thank you so much. I want to get my man Gerald in here. I know we late. We normally finish a little early, but I was long-winded. And so I want to get everybody in here who has something to say. Um, look, man, Gerald, you've been here for a minute, so I'm going to hit you with a tough question. Did you understand what I meant when I said true power is the ability? Oh, oh, and the young, somebody said, how do you get my books? If you want my books, you can download them on Amazon or you can email me at sperlingdennis at gmail.com. I got a few left. All right. So that's how you get my books. Those of you guys who want my books and my man, Black Wall Street has been reading the books and I appreciate it. So many others also. It's a three book set, uh, Rules to Live By, How to Maintain Peace of Mind and Happiness in the Conflicted World. That black book right there is depressing as fuck. It'll make you want to take a shot at Patron and fucking it'll, it'll make you relive your childhood. It gets better in the gold book. I basically tell you how to start a business, how I got through corporate America and all that. And the white book is real philosophical and it, it kind of, it puts you kind of where I am now to what led me to get to right here. It took me seven years to write the books. I had to pare it down from like 800 pages to what it is right now. 500 pages is filled with biblical scriptures. It gives a biblical reference to every lesson. Am I telling the truth? Am I lying? Black wall street. I give you biblical references. I, and I show you where the truth is because the true rules to live by are those universal rules laid out by by that holy bible that you guys read you just gotta make it real to you you see what i'm saying but uh my man gerald bro i gave a i hope i gave a great synopsis of history and it explained why patriarchies eventually overrun matriarchies and why these great religions that we love and and we worship and these great minds and these religions said don't let these bitches be in charge g's up holes down you see you understand why i know that's probably not in the hadith but a great prophet Muhammad, if he could, he probably would have said, you know, I know Jesus would have said, G's up, holds down. He couldn't. You said, but we know Paul did. G said, G's up, holds down. That's what that interpretation. Do you understand why they said that? I don't know. This is toxic masculinity at its best. But do you understand why they said that? Now that you're living through matriarchal times, especially as a member of the black community. Talk to me, Gerald. Uh, yes, sir. And um, they're um, having a Having having in, in these times, it's very it's very um it's very uh strange, especially you know growing up as a young man. I mean, I I had my I had my brothers, but um one thing I always mentioned on this page, uh, I, think, I think I mentioned it on this page that I actually went to the fire academy at one mm -hmm. point, and you know it, often a manhood is just doing something that's really um fearful and you could probably lose your life. And on the burn days, what the instructors would have us do was when we were on the attack line, we go into a burning building that was on fire and they would just stand Ooh. outside and, and let us. And then there, I think there was a couple inside, but they would just really just let us try to take it out. But we could actually, there were so many things going on at one point where the, the smoke and you know, the, the, it is very chaotic and you can't really see anything mm -hmm. and you're exhausted. It's, it's a hundred degrees outside and it's 4,000 degrees inside to the point where you just don't even know what the hell is going on. Right. And uh, you and your oxygen tank is running low because you're breathing so heavy. But in high pressure situations like that, you got to know how to keep calm and maintain and maintain your um, your form of uh, survival skills as a man and try to help help with your team coordinate and taking out this fire and saving hostages. Man. Yeah. You know, some of y'all have jobs like that. You ain't got to do jujitsu every day. You go to work. is like I, uh, it's, 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 this is dangerous. You got to be courageous to do that. Um, so man, you know, shout out to y'all. You need a, you need a beer and a break. You know what I mean? You need to be, especially you blue collar men. A lot of y'all do a lot of that work, construction, that hard lifting, you know, it's got a, it's a hard day of work ahead of you, uh, you know, at the plant, it's a hard day of work. Ahead. You do physical, physically taxing things and you probably so used to it. You're not even afraid to do it. You guys who work offshore on those oil wells, you guys who, who work on those trains and those train tracks. Y'all know how dangerous that shit is. You see what I mean? But um, 
Understand, even you got to kick it up a level. My military guys, the cops, the sheriffs, the constables, every time you pull a motherfucker over with 10 on his windows, you see what I'm saying? Uh, anytime you pull somebody with a pickup truck, you know it could pop off. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, so so kudos to you men, you hardworking men. But understand, I just did this because I wanted you guys to remember, those of you guys who don't have do jobs like that, who aren't challenged on a daily basis, basis to do manly things. Remember, that's part of who you are. That's part of your development, and your development never stops. Let me say this. Drinking five beers at the bar is not manly. Sitting at home watching a football game all day on Sunday is not manly. Okay, that's not what I mean when I may say masculinity. Let's be clear. Okay, how many you can eat 100 chicken wings at a sitting? That does not make you manly. Just you can fucking pass gas and clear out the room does not make you manly. Are we clear? Taking a shit and having a shit in the toilet about that motherfucking long does not make you manly. Okay? All right, y'all hear what I'm saying? All Let's right. not confuse that trivial trifling shit with traditional notions of masculinity. They will fuck you up if you watch these modern day TV shows. They will confuse you as to what man masculinity is. What am I doing today that would enhance my ability to survive as a man? See, a woman could go run up under a strong man and survive. But what would you as a strong man need to do and practice on? You're going to have to be able to protect, provide. You, you understand what I'm saying? So, so base what you do based on that. Traditional notions of masculinity are based on the traditional notions that men had to fill for the past 10,000 years. That's an easy barometer, okay? How fast your ass can run, how strong you are. Can you deal with an adversary in front of you? Or do you run and hide and let your family get taken? Are you properly armed? Do you do things that you're afraid of? Sometimes as a man, you got to do shit you're scared of. You see what I'm saying? You might be afraid of heights. Conquer that. That's a masculine thing. You know, you might be afraid of spiders. Go fuck into a tarantula farm. Pick a few up. You understand what I'm saying? I know. He's like, damn, Uncle D done went off in the woods. Y'all know what the fuck I mean. Big man 7917 says simps do simp things like raise another man's kids and wait for sloppy seconds from the baby mama after Pookie smashes in his house. God damn, boy. Y'all cold-blooded. Uh, my man, who else we got up in here? Salty, uh, uh, Salty Ball said, book of grudges. And the seeds grew in the venomous and <laughs> wrenched soil in the womb. That which was begotten from a withered rose was a toxic man from a withered rose. And thus he did her bidding. Praise God. But anyway, fellas, we are way past my normal timeline. I don't want to go to two minutes and 30 seconds. I believe Alvin is going to have an after conversation. Shout out to all the ice lords. Brothers, keep those cold shoulders turned. It's okay that you're doing what you're doing. If you don't like what you see in this grocery store, there's other grocery stores around the world. I want you men to marry black women. I want you men to have women of African descent. It don't matter to me whether she West Indian, Afro-Latina, African, African-American. That's my preference. But most importantly, I want you to have fit feminine women because that's going to bring the masculinity out of you. It's going to make you want to protect when you got a woman who motivates you. You understand one who, who motivates you to be the best man you can be, who's, sub, who's submissive and cooperative. It just is what it is. Now, if y'all want to get... um. I want to go over there to Alvin's broadcast. Y'all go on over there now and have a good after show. Y'all make sure y'all subscribe to his channel. He need about another 300 followers to, 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 to get monetized. I've been helping with the, working with the brother, and I keep – it's his hard work. I'm just sending them over there. You understand? And that's what I like to do on my page. I like to help build up other black men, even in my law office, even in my law practice. I like making them rich. I tell everybody around me, my goal is to make you rich. I tell I feed all the sharks in the water with me. Because guess what happens when you feed the sharks? You a shark, and you feed the other sharks. They don't eat your ass. You understand what I'm saying? That's what I like to do. I like to feed the sharks around me. You see what I mean? That's what I like to do. I like I, everybody. I tell my children, my son, my goal is to make you rich. I told my fiance, I can't wait till I make you rich. And as long as they listen and they follow the program, See, this, they can see success. So it's easy for me to convince them. Alvin, I, I want him to be a successful YouTuber. I want him to make some money. And I've been doing my best to help him out. Now, look, I'm just throwing him over there. You see what I mean? He learning. But I'm willing to do that for anybody. Look at my community tab. Look what I put up there. 
I'm even willing to share my space with you guys and we can do simulcasts and all kind of shit. Any, any creative thing we can do. I want to build up the people around me. I like warriors around me. I like successful men around me. Ain't no jealousy in me. I ain't no hating ass motherfucker. You understand? It's very real. I ain't, I'm not a hater. I'm a congratulator. I want to see success. Any motherfucker out there hating on other black people and shit, that's a bitch ass motherfucker, man. You trying to tear another black man down? How can you empower black men on one hand and then you tear black men down? Same thing for women. You say you empowering the women, but you tearing them down. No, I defend you, brothers, and I do my very best to lead you in the right direction in a moral way. You see what I'm saying? But I know how you are, so I make allowances for that too. Even even in the Bible, what did they do? They they said we got to bring all these heathens up in here. So what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna give them. We're gonna take their pagan ass holidays, and we're gonna call them Christian holidays. At least they celebrating under the banner of Christ. Hallelujah. You see what I'm saying? You got to work with motherfuckers. <laughs> I understand that. Y'all human beings. You're not robots. You see what I mean? I got to find you how you are. You see what I mean? Because I want you to live. I don't want to see no more of my friends and brothers getting, it'll break my heart if anything happened to you guys, that I, especially you guys who've been here for a while. It's some people that used to be with here, here that they're not here no more, and I wonder where they are. You see what I mean? I hope they're not in jail. I hope they're not dead. It's some guys, I'll see some of the guys that used to be here day one. I miss them. And so if I can uplift you, if I can help you get some success, then I'm cool with that because guess what I learned? And I ain't going to be here all night. It's lonely at the top. I've been successful a long time. The minute I cracked that $500,000 mark back in 2014, all my friends scattered. Why? Because I'm up here and they somewhere else. You know, unless you're willing to pay their way to go everywhere, they can't hang out with you. You understand what I'm saying, fellas? Yeah. They say it's lonely at the top for a reason. Because it is. You don't know who to trust. You up there with a bunch of other motherfuckers who've been there. You don't really know them like that, but all the homies can't get here. So what's the answer to that? You bring your people up with you, but not in a negative way. You bring them up a fair and square way. Hey, man, you made your money. This is how you make That's how you bring your people with you, not by tearing them down. I hope y'all understand what I'm saying, and I hope y'all understand yeah. my motivation. Yes, I want there to be great men out there in 20 years for my sons to look up to. You understand what I'm saying? I want them to be reinforced by what I said, by what by, by what they hear from you all. This is what I'm trying to do with my time here on YouTube. We That's why I ain't, you don't hear me arguing <laughs> about no white book on the motherfucking internet every goddamn day for two weeks. And what the white girl said. You don't hear me, excuse me, I shouldn't call a woman out her name. We should never disrespect individuals. We might say these bitches, these hoes, but not an individual. And so forgive me for that. I don't want to disrespect anybody. But y'all know what the fuck I'm talking about. We should not be focused on that when we got so much work to do ourselves. You understand what I'm saying, fellas? Anyway, right. I want to give a big shout out to Cody Marshall. But Cody, baby, you in too late, baby. Uh -uh, I got to go. God bless y'all. I'm sorry, I man. You. I came in late, man. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Don't worry. But we know you. We seen you. We appreciate you for coming through. God bless y'all. Love y'all, man. I hope y'all enjoyed this conversation. Y'all go check out Alvin over there. But other than that, I'll see y'all. This is Uncle D.